people of the world. Hey, thank you for watching Fun and Riker. My name's Harry, and today comes from my subscribers. So I want to thank the Canadian subscribers, my neighbors to the north. Thank you for watching. Keep your stick on the ice. Appreciate it. And thank you for all the rest of my subscribers, people that watch. Thank you for watching, subscribing. I appreciate it. Really means a lot to me. Love your questions. So keep the questions coming or comments. Please comment. Love all that. It really makes my day. And what really makes my channel what I want to make. Um, the comments and the feedback really keeps me going, keeps me motivated. Thank you. So today is top five reasons what subscribers don't like about the Riker. And I will, right here, is the top five and three quarter reasons what I don't like about the Riker. So check that one out. This is an addition to th that video. These are subscribers, <coughs> excuse me, subscribers top five reasons what they don't like about it number one is it doesn't if you have a 600 900 you don't have a grill guard uh, so everybody wants a little more protection for the radiator fortunately the rally comes with a grill guard and you know it does a pretty good job for rocks and all the stuff that could bounce into your radiator so that is a concern and I feel like, you know, maybe every Riker should have that. And uh, yeah, I guess that's why I bought a rally. It's one of the reasons. Number two is the seat. Now the seat, I can't compare. I had mine put in right away. I had a comfort seat put on it. And the other seat has that little lip which I just didn't really care for right away. That's why I just like had mine part of the package and had it installed right away. Now you can get the three other seats too. You can get, uh, well, there's three seats you can get. You can get Corbin, you can get the ultimate seat, or you can get the comfort seat. So, you know, I'm not here to make a seat review, but you know, there's three options to buy. And uh, I love my comfort seat and uh, you know, I guess the factory seat is just not that comfortable. So, uh, you know, it's uh, one of those things what they brought to my attention, the subscribers, thank you for that. And number third reason is the rattle in the Riker. And part of it could be from the CBT. And I have that in my other video also, the top five and three quarter reasons what I don't like about a Riker. But also it could be coming from your CVT airbox or your airbox. And you know, I have another video right here, how to get a rattle out of a breaker. And you know, it, it can am should really have this CVT or the airbox where it shouldn't rattle and there's a lot of plastic parts, but they should have addressed this. And I agree, you know, there's too much rattle in the Riker from the CVT, from the clunk to the actual front components rattling around. It should be a better design or there should be, uh, you know, a way that they remedied this before they sent them out. Number four, better way to check oil. If you check these cold, if you're new to the Riker scene and you're just checking the oil, let me check it and it's cold or maybe warmed up a little bit like a car, it's not, it's going to show it's low. So people will like freak out and go, I got a brand new Riker. And it's like, what's going on? It's brand new and the oil's low. We have to run it nine miles and you have to run it up to temp, you know, and then you have 10 seconds to take your cover down, you know, pull out your stick, wipe it off, shove it back in, screw it in, pull it back out, check it. You got 10 seconds, not a problem, but you know, there should be a better way of checking the oil instead of running nine miles somewhere to have your Riker get up to temp because this has a dry sump. So that is another concern. Number four. Oh, that's, we're up already on to number five wow number five it's too expensive to mod and 
there again, I already have two thousand about two hundred dollars in mine, not including the seeds. So I would probably have over two thousand five hundred dollars in mine already on mods. You know, you have the Madstead windshield, you have the link bag, you have uh, the carrier and back uh, floorboards. You know, it all of a sudden you know you have. 20 50 200 dollars you know i mean and all of a sudden you're up to all of a sudden you're going how much did i spend it can be quite a, a bit a lot and with the you have to understand maybe you if you want to get a touring machine and you want to get luggage maybe you should get uh rt or maybe you should get an f3 and you know maybe that's one thing before people Instead of jumping into the right, you're going to the other part of the family. And, you know, because the Riker has a low price point, you are going to be putting, putting money into the mods. And before you know it, you'll have $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 worth of mods. So, you know, that is a concern. Um, so look into the other Riker family, or excuse me, the other Can-Am family. Look into the F3s, the Spider RTs, and take a look at those. Might be better suited for you just to spend a little bit more money or a lot more money and get what you want and get a touring machine or whatever you like. So those are the top five reasons. I, you know, I got these from my subscribers and I've had a lot of feedback on my video, and which is absolutely fantastic. I love it. So I still love mine and I will keep mine. I'll keep riding it. And uh, you know, I'll let you guys know if there's any breakdowns, any problems that I have with mine. So far I've uh, put about uh, 5,000 miles on mine. I haven't had any problems yet. So as always, keep it right and tight. And I'll see you next time. Take care, have a great week people. Bye.